Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. Today we'll be making this fun Easter egg basket cake, which is really, really easy and super forgiving. So you'll need a cake that has been baked in a cupcake tin case, like a giant cupcake tin. And then you'll be filling it just like normal. I've divided my cake into four sections. And then after I fill it all in, I created a crumb coat. I created mine in white because I knew I was going to be adding a final layer of frosting again in brown. But if you want to skip that step, you can just tint this buttercream here in um, brown by adding dark chocolate ganache. Your whole outside of the cake is going to be covered in Kit Kats, and that's why I say you really just need a crumb coat. But if you want to be extra neat, you can add a second layer of buttercream again. I'll have the recipe for both the buttercream and the ganache in the eye icon or in the description box below for you guys. Once the cake has been covered, you can take your scraper and smooth it down, making sure to angle your scraper to the shape of your cake. Fill in any spots as you go, bring that lip of frosting towards the center, and then add your Kit Kats immediately. Do not pop your cake into the fridge first, it will harden your buttercream and your Kit Kats won't stick to the sides. Technically though, if you do want to make it ahead of time and add the Kit Kats later, you can just add a little bit of buttercream behind them and stick them on that way. Because of the shape of the cake, you're going to have little spaces in between your Kit Kats. You can fill that in or leave it totally up to you. It is pretty camouflage. But I've taken a number 352 piping tip and just created little leaves in between and at the top. I start them nice and small and then as I work my way up to the top, I make them larger and larger. I decided to pipe a ring right on top of the cake, nice and thick, and then left a little space right in the center to apply my Easter eggs. If you wanted to, you could cover the whole top instead, um, but I just felt like it was a little bit too much buttercream. It wasn't really necessary considering the Easter eggs are gonna be hiding the whole space. Try to go for a foil that is nice and colorful and adds a pop of color to your cake. To make it even more dynamic, I've taken some teeny tiny Easter eggs and planted them in there as well. For the basket handle, I've used fondant in brown, rolled out three logs, try to keep them as, I guess, the same in shape as possible, and then twisting them in opposite directions on either end to create this basket weave um, or rope style effect. Trim off the base and then feed some wooden skewers through each end at least a good four centimeters up uh, into the fondant and that way it's just nice and stable. Cut the sticks down to size another four centimeters or so and then let that dry overnight if you can. In fact you could do this the day before you start building the cake and that way it's nice and dry and ready to be inserted. Use a scissors to help guide the sticks into the cake and that way you're not pressing down on the fondant and potentially breaking your handle. For a finishing touch, you could add little ribbons on either side. And if you cut them long enough, you can even tie them up into little bows, like I wish I had. But that's okay, this still looked pretty cool. And that's it, your Easter egg basket cake is complete. She is a very forgiving design, I might add. So you're covering the whole size with Kit Kats, you're just doing some really easy, repetitive, basic piping. So. Yeah, if you do recreate this, hashtag Rosie's Dessert Spot so I can see your awesome creation as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you again in the next one.